Welcome back to the Beta Console Gamer, and today, my friends, we're going to be covering everything that we learned from the recent gameplay reveal for the upcoming turn-based strategy game, Marvel's Midnight Suns. We'll be getting into the good, the bad, and the ugly as we delve into the plot of Midnight Suns and discuss the gameplay mechanics and hero abilities that we've discovered thus far. And of course, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like and subscribe to help keep the channel going because winter draws ever closer and daddy needs money to keep the lights on. And with that, let's get to it, and we'll start with a quick recap for those in the back who understandably may have missed the initial reveal of Marvel's Midnight Suns when it was first shown during the 2021 Gamescom opening night stream. Marvel's Midnight Suns is a new turn-based strategy game which is being developed by Firaxis, the makers of the much-beloved XCOM series. This new entry into the superhero pantheon of games is based on the 1990s Marvel comic arc Rise of the Midnight Suns, which involves a group of heroes with supernatural origins, including the likes of Ghost Rider and the Vampire Hunter Blade, teaming up to take on the mother of all demons, Lilith. In the Midnight Suns video game, you'll get to follow the story of a brand new player-made superhero called The Hunter, who is the daughter-slash-son of Lilith and who was responsible for defeating the Mother of Demons at some point in the ancient past in a battle which apparently wounded both the monster and the hero enough to force both into a few centuries worth of ornate creepy coffin sleepy time. However, you just can't keep a good mother of demons down, and at the start of the game, you can see Lilith being resurrected, which in turn leads to a group of very familiar heroes resurrecting the ancient hunter so that he slash she can save the world from mummy dearest all over again before Lilith can resurrect her dark master Cthulhu. Okay, are we all caught up? Good, because earlier this week we got yet another look at Marvel's Midnight Suns, this time including gameplay, a trailer, and a discussion with the devs to talk about some of the finer points behind the game. And it's safe to say that some of the revelations were met with a bit of a mixed reaction from the fanbase. Now, first up, let's get the graphical commentary out of the way because I personally love the way that the game looks, and I've seen some people criticizing the visuals, which I don't really get. I mean, granted, it isn't the most beautiful video game that I've ever seen, but is that really the benchmark that we're going for? It's exactly what I'd expect from a Firaxis Games made title that's set in the Marvel Universe and which is being released on both the more powerful PS5 and Xbox Series consoles along with the Nintendo Switch and the last gen PS4 and Xbox One consoles. All things considered, the game is graphically sound to say the very least, and I'm enjoying the art direction too when it comes to the appearance of the heroes with their sexy ass new suits, the environments, and the enemy character models. But beyond that, conceptually, I love the fact that Firaxis has opted to set their game in a little corner of the superhero universe that hasn't previously been explored in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and so is unknown to the fans who aren't avid comic book readers. But let's face it, graphics aren't everything, and any game involving Captain America and Iron Man is going to involve some pretty gratuitous choreographed violence. So without any further ado, let's get into what we know about the combat mechanics of Marvel's Midnight Suns. Prior to a fight, you'll get to select a team of three heroes to jump into battle with who, ideally, will have abilities that will complement the rest of the squad. However, if Midnight Suns is anything like previous Firaxis games, you'll probably be forced to switch your team out fairly regularly as heroes are going to need some time to recover from wounds sustained in previous encounters. Which I personally like. I need to be forced to explore the roster rather than staying in my comfort zone, so I'm hoping they implement this wound mechanic. Now obviously, this game was never going to be a complete XCOM clone, partially because we're dealing with superheroes instead of regular soldiers, and also because the development team literally told us as much. And as such, there are some major deviations as to how combat is going to unfold. First off, judging by what we've already seen, there appears to be no battle grid, which either means there's going to be a greater degree of player movement relative to previous XCOM games, or it could simply be that the battle grid was hidden for these presentations. Second, and this is the big one, Firaxis have chosen to implement a card-based ability system for selecting hero attacks. At the start of each battle, the player is dealt a random selection of hero abilities, or cards if you will, and you won't be able to trigger that ability in combat unless you have a sufficient amount of a resource known as heroism, though we don't yet know what that resource is, how it's generated, and how it's replenished. The ability cards divvied out at the beginning of each battle are clearly hero specific and it looks like they're going to be drawn from a stockpile of player owned cards that can be acquired in the hub area by giving Doctor Strange the resources that you've acquired from earlier missions and allowing him to perform weird magic. And I'll be damned if that weird magic doesn't look a whole lot like a loot box animation but we'll get into that later. Incidentally, you'll also be able to upgrade certain abilities with the help of the all round friendly guy Blade, the Vampire Hunter. 
Beyond that and the vague air of concern surrounding the card ability system, there seems to be a lot of XCOM DNA in the combat of Marvel's Midnight Suns. You're gonna have to think tactically with every move and if you do, you'll be able to use the environments to your advantage by for example slamming an enemy off an edge or into an explosive barrel. And speaking of those environments, key locations from the Marvel Universe are going to be featured as playable maps, including the Stark Avengers Tower and Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorus. In between the missions, you'll also have the opportunity to get to know and even form relationships with the cast of heroes that populate Marvel's Midnight Suns. You'll either be able to chat to them, carry out various activities, or even join extracurricular clubs in a cozy Hogwarts-esque environment. And according to developer Firaxis, the decisions you make and how you act in the chill zone will apparently have a significant bearing on your teammates' performance in battle, with stronger relationships granting access to more powerful team-up moves. Hell, there's nothing not to like here. You get to hang around and strengthen your team and learn the lore surrounding the adventure while you shoot their shit with superheroes. Actually, I speak a lie, there is one downside to the RPG element of Marvel Midnight Suns, and that is the fact that according to the devs, we will not be able to romance the superheroes. We will only be able to become, and I quote, very, very, very close friends with them. Way to ruin the entire game in one decision for Axis. Now the design decision to include a card-based combat system sent the fear of God into many a gamer who, like me, assumed that the game would be full of pay-to-win microtransactions. However, these fears were ostensibly allayed a few hours later by a tweet from the game's official Twitter account in which we were told that there will be, and I quote, no loot boxes or related microtransactions to get more cards. And of course, we'll have to wait and see whether that remains to be the case after the launch window has passed, but either way, we do know that microtransactions are going to be in the Midnight Suns in at least one form. As later in the same tweet, Firax has confirmed that there would be paid cosmetic skins in the game. And that sucks the big one because a huge amount of the joy in an Xbox game can be found in customizing your squad and giving them a personality. But let's face it, it's also par for the course. I mean, in XCOM 2 as an example, there were tons of cosmetic items that were locked behind a DLC paywall. I'm personally hoping that these paid cosmetics are simply a shortcut and that you're gonna be able to grind away and earn them anyway without having to pay. Because very few things in this industry make me as shit curdlingly angry as having to pay for nonsense which obviously should have been included in the game for its sticker price but instead have been carved out and sold separately out of pure and simple avarice. In fact, here's how to fix this. Game developers should not be allowed to charge extra for cosmetic items that were being developed alongside the core game. You should only be able to charge for that shit if its development started after the game went gold. Otherwise, you're pretty much just admitting that you carved out content that should have been in that original release. Honestly, it's just greedy shit animals that do this, which is why I'm so all the time. Sorry, I get upset. Anyway, another minor detractor I noticed was that the game doesn't seem to be fully voice acted. Of course, we're still months out from the release, so there could always be a possibility that that changes, though I doubt that's going to be the case, and to be honest, it's not a situation where it matters that much. And let me make it clear, I'm still extremely hyped for this game. The idea of a Firaxis-made XCOM-style adventure through the Marvel Universe sounds like a dream come true. And even though they didn't follow the original XCOM formula as much as I necessarily would have liked, the game still has a massive amount of potential. And the customization options still sound pretty cool. Alongside getting to dictate the look of your own original Marvel hero, you're going to get to unlock new costumes for the rest of the team which are going to provide passive quirks to your heroes and there's even going to be one special costume which seems to be tied to your hero's ultimate Midnight Suns ability, which is unique to each character and according to the developers, has the ability to change the nature of the map. And as a final point, we haven't seen the entirety of the hero roster. So far, we've been introduced to Firax's version of Ghost Rider, Captain America, Wolverine, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Blade, Captain Marvel, Magic, and Nico Minoru, which makes nine, but apparently there's gonna be 12 in total. So we can expect another three heroes to be announced prior to the game's release. And on that happy note, I'm gonna leave it there for today. Let me know what you thought about the gameplay reveal for Marvel's Midnight Suns in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe and to keep it here for all the biggest news from around the video gaming industry.